common. They're female. Have you witnessed anything like this? Mate, I've told you before, this is for real women. Is there a problem here? No matter how subtle... So who is it this week, a guy or a girl? Haven't you made your mind up yet? They are all forms of sexually based harassment. Sarah, get that thing off your neck. We don't all need to hear about it. Anybody can report this behaviour. And there are laws to protect you. So Do something about it. Hi everybody, this Labor Day weekend as we gather with family and friends, we'll also come together as a nation to honor some of our own, the working men and women of America, who across the generations built this country up and helped make us who we are today. On Monday, we'll celebrate that proud history. We'll pay tribute to the values working Americans embody, hard work, responsibility, sacrifice, looking out for one another. And we also need to recommit ourselves to their cause, to securing for them a better bargain so that everyone who works hard in America has a chance to get ahead. You see, over the past four and a half years, we've fought our way back from the worst recession of our lifetimes. And thanks to the grit and resilience of the American people, we've begun to lay a foundation for stronger, more durable economic growth. But as any working family will tell you, we're not yet where we need to be. For over a decade, working Americans have seen their wages and income stagnate, even as corporate profits soar and the pay of a fortunate few explodes. For even longer than that, inequality has steadily risen. The journey of upward mobility has become harder. And in too many communities across this country, the shadow of poverty continues to cast a pall over our fellow citizens. Reversing that trend needs to be Washington's highest priority, and it sure is mine. That's why over the past month, I've traveled all across America, laying out my ideas for how we can build on the cornerstones of what it means to be middle class. A good job that pays a good wage, a good education, a home of your own, health care when you get sick, a secure retirement even if you're not rich, and more chances for folks to earn their way into the middle class as long as they're willing to work for it. The truth is, it's not going to be easy to reverse the forces that have conspired for decades against working Americans. But if we take a few bold steps, and if Washington is able to come together with common purpose and common resolve, we'll get there. Our economy will keep getting stronger, and more Americans will be able to join the ranks of the middle class. So this Labor Day, while you're out there grilling in the backyard or taking the final trip for the summer, I hope you'll also take a moment to reflect on the many contributions of our working men and women. For generations, it was the great American middle class that made our economy the envy of the world. And as long as I'm president, I'm going to keep fighting to make sure that happens again. Thanks, and have a great weekend. a sudden urge to go get a high-end sports car, preferably a convertible, and cruise down to the beach. The problem is, the nearest beach is thousands of miles away from here. Anyway, welcome back to Studio 26 on this Labor Day special, uh, First Cup, and hope you're enjoying the show. And uh, before I continue on with uh, what's trending today, and what's on the old tweeter, you may have heard this a little bit earlier in the show. I think I played it. Now, those of you outside the Kirksville area are going, What the hell was that? And those of you that live in the Kirksville area are probably going, What the hell was that? Well, that is the tail end of an annoying commercial that has been running for years on KTBO. And if I'm not mistaken, 
It seems like the first time I heard that ad, saw that ad on KTVO, was when my parents moved to Unionville 18 years ago. And they're still running that same commercial. And every time I've seen that, I'm thinking, those two little kids in that ad have got to be grown up by now and possibly have their own kids. I don't know. But I guess that's how you stay in business. You make one commercial, good or bad, run it forever, because nothing uh, sells like consistency. So you keep hearing this. At the end of an ad, by golly, you are going to remember it. What well, anyway, what do you say we pull over and uh, get ready for some trends of the day, shall we? Now, I haven't had a chance to check the veracity of this article, but as far as I can tell, it's legitimate. I just can't believe it's not getting more publicity. Uh, what I'm talking about is Miley Cyrus. Yes, I'm talking about good old Miley once again. Remember her from the VMAs a week ago yesterday? Well, apparently prior to her well, I don't know what you call that had an interview with news.com.au and she reportedly said quote I have so many effing issues unquote okay in a revealing interview conducted just before her VMA debacle Miley Cyrus told the mirror I messed up I have so many effing issues the 20 year old star went on to say that I don't have a normal life. Well, you think? I uh, take a hiatus every now and then, but I'm not good at that. <laughs> You're not good at dancing either, but uh, that's a whole other matter. Uh, Cyrus, of course, stunned millions of fans by wearing nothing but latex skin colored bra and pants. Those were pants? I must be wearing long johns with these shorts on. Anyway, uh, when she got up close and personal with a variety of teddy bears and Robin Thicke at last week's VMA Awards. So, Miley Cyrus is effing messed up. Well, the first step is admitting it. I mean, look at Lindsay Lohan over the years. Uh, she has trashed her life, but as I said it on a program a couple of weeks ago, I believe she's sincere in turning her life around, and I hope she is. And I hope Miley doesn't bottom out but I have a feeling she's going to have to before she can start to rise again. I mean, we all do it to a certain extent, but certainly not to uh, the scrutiny that uh, celebrities go through. Anyway, a few items off the uh, community calendar for this Monday. Of course, it is Labor Day. This federal holiday celebrates the economic and social contributions of the American worker, traditionally seen as the unofficial end of summer. VJ Day, also known as Victory Over Japan Day, celebrates the day Japan surrendered to Allied forces, effectively ending World War II. Of course, that treaty was signed aboard the USS Missouri on this date in 1945, which we heard on CBS Radio News just a moment ago. And finally, for today, the 56th annual Mackinac Bridge Walk from St. Ignis to Mackinac City, Michigan, takes place today. So... Those are just a few of the things trending and what's going on around the country on the second day of September 2013. And that's going to, oh, son of a bitch, why is this happening? It's time for News of the Weird. And topping the News of the Weird this morning. Patrons of Darlene's Tavern in is it Sutlersville, Maryland? I think that's how you pronounce that. Sutlersville, Maryland are used to getting bombed inside their favorite drinking hole. But how about outside, too? Well, let's see. A Maryland National Guard jet accidentally dropped an inert practice bomb that landed in the bar's parking lot about 100 feet away from the building. Fortunately, no one was injured. Boy, I don't think anything will bring 
uh, and he went back to uh, sobriety faster than a plastic bomb or a practice bomb falling near your car. A University of Arkansas student was shot and wounded by his own t-shirt firing air gun. Those things are cool. I want to get one. The Razorbacks marketing intern was carted off in a stretcher after his weapon of mass cut poly distri uh, distribution malfunction. Fans across Razorback Stadium heard a loud boom and saw the student immediately fall to the ground on Saturday. That was according to witnesses. So far, the Obama administration has not decided whether to seek congressional approval in apprehending the gun. I made that last part up. A Vermont man, a Vermont man, able to tap a maple syrup tree in five minutes or less. Excelsior! Well, anyway, a Vermont man may have been growing marijuana, but he wasn't inhaling. William, don't call me Bill Clinton Reynolds, age 73, was hit with a $200 ticket by St. Johnsbury cops who seized a two-and-a-half-foot-tall marijuana plant from his apartment. Reynolds claimed he found seeds, grew them without knowing he had planted pot. Cops acknowledged that Reynolds had no other pot plants, and there was no evidence he's a marijuana user. So, while that may be true, I don't think you're going to get away with that excuse. I mean, the moment that thing started coming up, you should have realized, I better destroy these plants now. I think I'll destroy them with fire. Oh, cool. Got you more of those brownies? A 92-pound head of cabbage, good God, was worth a lot of greed to one budding young farmer, Kiva Dinkle, a 10-year-old from Wasilla, Alaska, won $2,000 for his wedding entry at the Alaska State Fair's Giant Cabbage Way Off. He's named the cabbage Bob. I understand the runner-up was uh, named Sarah Palin. Oh! This one is stupidity on steroids. Well, she should know. And you thought New York City parking was a hassle. A driver from Malmo, Sweden, with was uh, charged with uh, $4.5 million in unpaid parking tickets, has been crowned the nation's number one scofflaw. How do you say that word, anyway? Well, anyway, but the circumstances seem a bit suspicious. Seems the unidentified man hasn't had a valid driver's license for three years, and he's registered. He's the registered owner of more than 2,000 cars. I bet they're all Matchbox cars. Well, anyway, that's uh, what's trending today on the World Wide Web. In the meantime, what's on Twitter? And you can always follow me on Twitter. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard. How quaint. Well, New York's Attorney General recently sued Donald Trump for $40 million, say the real estate mogul, helped run a phony Trump University that promised to make students rich, but instead steer them into expensive and mostly useless seminars. So I've searched the Twitter for comments, and here's what I've found. Andy Laster writes in, I know this sounds awful, but there's a tiny part of me that thinks you deserve to get scammed if you signed up to go to Trump University. I just wonder what the mascot would be. It would be the, the Trump chumps? Anyway. Top conservative cat, Tea Party cat, writes, Well, of course Trump University didn't help everyone. Trump's methods only work if you start by inheriting $100 million. Sam Rowe writes in, how many Trump University grads has Donald Trump hired? Hmm. Interesting question. And finally, Obsolete Dogman writes in, Did Trump University at least offer classes about finding the real birth certificate? Ooh, nasty. Going right for the jugular on that one. Well, it's time for today's song of the day. Now, this was a runner-up for uh, this week's edition of... Uh, of uh, Joe's Mixtape, which I paid tribute to the American Worker on uh, yesterday's program, which you can check on, uh, which you can listen to by downloading off my website, tinyurl.com slash Gunther's House. And uh, I didn't make it in the final cut, and I regret it, but I thought, well, I'll save it for today because it's an appropriate work song. And it happens to be one of my favorite shows, even though it's been canceled now from the Discovery Channel. 
not very happy about it, but 